Welcome to all the classic car enthusiasts. Uh, <coughs> I'm here with the e talk tonight. Okay, so I'm going to give you the uh, answers to um, the third quiz I've done, uh, which was about the Italian job, the movie with uh, Michael Caine as Charlie Croker. <coughs> uh, I got quite a lot of uh, uh, email answers, but uh, quite a lot of people said that. Uh, um, Powell, who, who was uh, uh, one, an actor at the time, I think he was famous for uh, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar or something. Um, he was in the movie, but it wasn't him that was actually on the back of the coach. It was actually, uh, his name is uh, Peter Collinson, and he was actually the director of the movie. And he played the guy waving him into the back of the coach, Peter Collinson. And as I say, he was the director as well. That was his other job. He, the, the bit that he did was just a cameo role, a bit like Alfred Hitchcock used to do and so on. Uh, and, and he died quite young age, I think he was 44 of cancer, I believe. So, and the other part of the question was, who was the main character of the guy that set up the Italian job, or the money man of it? And it was Mr. Bridger, uh, was his name, was the character's name, and it was, it was played by Noel Coward. Um, so, the winner tonight for the third t-shirt is in Canada and his name is uh, Jeff Wood and he's from Ontario, Canada. So I've got your size and everything Jeff so I'm going to send that out to you. I know you drop me uh, comments uh, um, from time to time. So anyway, Jeff Wood is the winner. Only uh, two answers were correct out of all the emails I got. Um, and. Uh, so, uh, yeah, well done to you. There was, was one, uh, was Jeff from Canada and another chap from the UK, Leicester, that got it right. Uh, the others had uh, uh, Powell, uh, who was in the movie, like I said, he was part of the gang, but he went off with the England supporters, so it wasn't him. Okay, so for tonight's uh, uh, question, again, I'll do it over, I'll do this, what I'll do is I'll do this one over. Uh, three days because the 48 hours doesn't seem to be enough. So these are the t-shirts. So the Dave Jaguar 66 are seen on YouTube, which is my channel obviously. And just let me know what size you need and the address. Okay, so uh, well done to Jeff, uh, Jeff Wood in, in Ontario. And we'll get it sent out to you, Jeff. Okay, so tonight's question is, and I'm going to go over this on another video, but um, E-type Jaguars and most cars of this era or this ilk that had wire wheels, um, the, the spinners that hold the wheel on, hold the wire wheel on, they're normally 72 spoke wire wheels, and the, the spinners that hold them on, which is this piece here, get it out, excuse me a second, my glasses up, this piece, the spinner, so this is a two-eared spinner, uh, this thread that's on this, is on, on the, they always tighten to the rear. So they come off, they undo going forward and, and, and tighten going backwards. And, the, and there's a three part question tonight. So the three parts are, why is it that wire wheels tighten to the back and not going forward when the car is going forward all the time? So I want the answer to that, the technical reason why they tighten backwards and not forwards when 99% of the car the time the car is moving forwards. The second part of the question is, I'm going to pick up the camera, um, and there's a third part as well. So there's three parts of this, but I'll run it over three days now, uh, or four, depending on how many uh, people I get, because they seem to be getting less, so maybe you don't want the shirts. So I'll pick the camera up and I'll show you uh, exactly what the second part is. So the first part is, is why do wire wheel spinners predominantly, not all of them, but predominantly, why do they tighten to the rear and come off going forward? Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is, on Jaguars, on, uh, this is the E-Type Series 1 4.2. This is a 66 car. Why is it that this is the XK engine, which was developed in uh, 1947, I believe. Well, it came out in 1947. Uh, it was designed in, during the war with William Lyons and, and his team. Why is it with this engine, 
with, with the way it's laid out, what is what is different about the the cylinder position on this car, on this XK engine, or predominantly Jaguars, that you don't have normally on a car? So the question is, is the the cylinder positions, the numbering of them, why is it different on this car than it is on most other pr uh, production cars? So that's question number two. First one is the spinners. Uh, why are they closed to the back and why are they tighten to the back and open coming off? The the uh, the cylinder positions, the, the the way they're numbered, and the third part of it is what was the very first production car, the very first production car that Jaguar had all wheel disc brakes, all four wheels with disc brakes that came out as standard. What was the model of the car that all four wheels had disc brakes all round? So that's the question for tonight, or three questions for tonight. So DaveJaguar66 at gmail.com. And as I say, you've seen the T-shirt. So uh, I've not done a lot over the weekend because I've got family here. But I just want to show you what we're up to. There's a couple of things. Um, oh, maybe I'll show you this. Uh, there's a little car I made for, for nieces and nephews. And it's a, it's a Land Rover. Little, it's called uh, a Toylander. This is a, uh, a kit you can buy or you can make the wood yourself or do whatever you want. This is slightly different from the usual. They're normally a short wheelbase Land Rover. This one's a long wheelbase because I have a, a real 1967 Series 2 long wheelbase Land Rover and I wanted to make a kind of little copy for the kids. So uh, it's even got a little motorised en engine in, the, in, the, in there. You can see how it's made of wood and you can, you can even turn it on, I think, if the batteries are... Uh, what is it? Even even turns. Anyway, that'll go off on its own. So I made the steering gear up for this and I didn't buy it from Toylander. And it doesn't steer as well as it should. So now one of the projects I'm going to do over the next couple of days, if you're interested, is I'm going to fit their steering gear. And and I bought the tires, all the tires from them. Originally I bought them from a home depot type thing, and the the, the axles are, are not as good. So that's one project I'm doing this weekend. Um, I'm going to be working on the XK as well. And like I said the other day, um, if you look under here, you can see this is a piece of steel bar. Uh, and this is where the original front, this is where it had to be put back in. And then what we've done is we've used this steel bar and bent it to shape to give this some depth. You can see the depth that we've had to put on it. If we'd have just used lead, it would be very soft. So we. We built it up with two. We put one in and then a second one in the middle because it needs to be out further here. So it gives it something substantial to sit on. So this is another job that will be done. So, yeah, that's it for tonight. We're nearly out of our 10 minute period. Um, so, yeah, just to reiterate for the T-shirt competition, why do the spinners tighten to the rear and not going not to the front? What, what's the reason behind, what, what, why, why is that, what, what is the reason for it, the technical reason? The, the, the XK engines, or the Jaguar engines predominantly, why were the numbers, why were the, the, the cylinders numbered in a different way? And thirdly, which was the first ever model of Jaguar to have all round disc brakes as standard as a production car? Okay. So take care. Thanks, thanks for watching in and um, good luck with the questions and, and uh, well done to the last winner. Bye for now. Take care. Bye.